The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. And as always, it only matters that you're here at the appointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So, we had kind of a nice push uh, early in the morning. Um, there were some very large, uh, as I said in the morning, Category 5 hurricane warnings uh, that I had in my newsletter, which you can get by going to the front page of TFNN and signing up. Uh, anyway, uh, we acted accordingly, and we acted uh, even uh, foreshadowed the coming developments of this morning. But uh, we shall see. And uh, got a lot of questions in the email, so we'll get to those today. Um, and uh, really, is there – I guess a lot of people are talking about uh, the bill that passed uh, the Senate. And if there's really anything that's going to happen, I think that's a lot of the discussion today. Uh, the answer is no. Um, it changes literally almost nothing. It does nothing about inflation. Uh, it sends a lot of money to people to build cars that probably – I don't know if any of that money is going to go to work uh, for pushing uh, EVs below $40,000. It's awful tough to build an EV like that. Uh, pushes a great deal of uh, uh, work – or not work – and uh, – development of uh, uh, rare earths here in the United States. The problem is uh, we've had those uh, bottled up for about 10 years in lawsuits, uh, and it doesn't look like the government's going to change that. So I don't know why you encourage one thing and then make damn sure it doesn't happen on the other. So uh, a lot of press, a lot of bluster. I don't think it really changes much of anything unless you can make a under $40,000 or under $50,000 EV. That's about it. But uh, I think a, a lot of people are using it for an excuse to uh, uh, to uh, tell everybody why they should be buying Ford, which is up about 4.5%. Same thing with uh, General Motors. Uh, and, of course, why they've advertised uh, cars uh, that might be able to hit uh, this number from uh, Tesla, it doesn't really do much of anything uh, for them because they don't make anything uh, anywhere close to it. And, of course, at the highs, about 913 on Tesla, it's trading at about 884 now. So uh, pretty much a sell the news kind of thing. So I think by the end of next week, everybody's going to forget about it because it really doesn't do anything about inflation. Uh, what it's supposed to do about uh, green energy deals is probably never going to happen. So really, I'm looking more at what would be done for an actual inflation. And I, it's just my feeling, but uh, I think it's backed up by the charts, that we're looking at a rather significant uh, event this week, probably on the CPI numbers. I think a lot of people uh, are looking at, at a lot of things and thinking, well, nothing happened, nothing happened. Well, it doesn't matter till it matters, but my guess is that we're going to start seeing a lot of other uh, numbers come in that have finally people have raised their prices and, uh, and it, they trickle through of high uh, gasoline prices has already come through and my guess is they're not going to want to pull those prices back anytime soon uh, a variety of other things between supply lines high gasoline and uh, diesel prices uh, diesel still over five bucks uh, nationally i think uh, we're just under four bucks nationally now on gas and you look at uh, going into a winter 
where just uh, two years ago, uh, total energy pr- uh, uh, per household is probably going to go from an average of about twenty five, twenty eight hundred dollars to a little over five thousand dollars this year. So even if they, you know, if you're just talking natural gas to the rest, there's going to probably be a fairly strong uh, contraction uh, of uh, the economy, especially uh, for those folks uh, it really uh, that are going to be making less than $200,000. In fact, uh, out of the at least the CBOE or CBOE, the uh, Congressional Budget Office (CBO) is saying that uh, 80% of all the new taxes in this bill would actually be paid by people under $200,000 a year. That's including uh, the 1% on share buybacks uh, and uh, some of the other uh, deals. I'm not exactly sure if the corporate tax, minimum tax of 15% is going to change much of anything. Uh, People with very uh, sharp pencils can make it look like you make nothing in a corporation. And of course, you can move things in and out of the country. I remember my CEO, uh, I was always busy trying to to get products made and get them uh, and get people to buy them. Uh, so both the supply and the demand side, he was busy uh, trying to uh, get all kinds of things out of the Canadian government. Uh, and I always thought that well, what a waste of time to spend your life trying to negotiate uh, the government and what they can do for you instead of actually selling products, which we were. So I guess we got it on both sides. And you kind of have to play the game by the rules, but. It never makes you feel good about it. 877-927-6648. So, as I said, I think we're probably looking for some fairly large surprises this week. And uh, we'll see how the rest of the day ends up. But uh, I think uh, you're looking at a couple of uh, attempts here to blow through the previous highs. And I think uh, today's close is probably going to tell us a great deal more. Uh, other things going on already over most of this TFNN station. Uh, questions about NVIDIA. Do I want to handle that now or do I want to handle that after the break? NVDA. Well, we'll get started now and then we'll get into it. Um, did gap lower? As I said, you got to really watch for these uh, companies that uh, pop below the three by three displaced moving average. We saw so many of them uh, just going straight up and up and up and volume falling out. Um, Now, this was, of course, on NVIDIA, one of the bigger moves out here today and kind of a dark shadow on the SMHs, too, which we'll look at. But uh, everybody, of course... uh, said it was over now they're saying it's going to probably drag on a little bit and my guess is everybody's going to say well it's over yet again but uh it's probably going to take another quarter or two to get through all the overhead uh that came with uh bitcoin miners um but uh great company Uh, you just need to wait until it hits the right price to get in there we'll be back in a minute inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 and as we return we're looking back yeah, we're at the uh, low of the day. We're going to be playing uh, S&P Limbo to the close, but uh, we shall see. Um, and generally a question about the way volume comes in. Now, if you listen to the Wyckoff guys, uh, it was always uh, you take the volume as you come. I've never seen that to work out long term, uh, but uh, I've seen um, – you know, at least okay volume today. Now, could you say this is volume off the top? Well, there wasn't a lot of volume in the morning. We got about 7.3 billion shares now. Uh, it was fairly light. So you could probably say most of the volume came in today after 11. Uh, and uh, the question is, I would say a better judge of this would be the last 30 minutes of the day do we see a bunch of volume come in and uh, also ring the uh, register uh, for the top so i'll look at that later today um anyway we looked at nvidia uh three gaps down below you've got your first gap down i would love to see this thing back at about 155 uh not only uh, do i like that um certainly uh, over the weekend, uh, they were working with their partners to drop prices. In fact, one card that was like uh, 2200 bucks, 2100 bucks is now you can get for 1100 bucks today. And I've been needing one of these cards. I've been waiting. The one I wanted is $4,000. I'm about half tempted just because how great the pricing is in comparison to even suggested retail price these are now there's probably going to be about a three month window maybe six months where you're going to be able to get some very good deals and then those deals will evaporate uh the downside is so many of these cards have been used in crypto mining and they're kind of uh, been burnt up so buying them used is somewhat problematic unless you know the provenance that's a word i learned by watching uh what is that uh, not roadhouse what is that on PBS? Probably the only thing worth watching on PBS. Antiques Roadshow. That's what it is. The Provenance. 
They always like to talk about the provenance. And, of course, they have to say it that way. Provenance. Anyway, uh, the provenance of the cards. So I'll probably buy one new or from some kid that I know where it came from. But, uh, eh, you're down. Anyway, uh, let's get to uh, a little bit of history, and uh, we'll talk about the rest of the stuff going on today. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1980, the Project Ch Chess team at IBM, which is one of their Skunk Works divisions, showed a prototype computer to their corporate management. Management gives the approval for the team to build an operational computer as long as they can deliver it within a one-year deadline to compete with the rapidly emerging personal computer market, mostly Apple at the time. One year and four days later, the IBM PC hardware is introduced, and the rest is sort of history. But, of course, uh, why they ended up really catching the lion's share early on uh, didn't end up uh, actually catching the lion's share much past about 1984 or 5. Uh, with clones and other things coming on, uh, IBM didn't like uh, dealing with dirty little consumers. They liked going to big corporations that they could charge them, and no one ever asked what the invoice was for. Let, ask me how I know. Anyway, uh, 1980, the beginning of the PC retail and business part of the computer market. 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always put a message in the den. But it's been strangely quiet. All quiet on the Western Front. Off seven and a half points after being up about 45, I think, early on the day on the S&P cash. So a nice swing out here and some decent volume off the top. Um, what did we have here? There was one other question. Uh, that's it. Eh, not much else going on in that. So let's go to the charts already in progress. And, of course, uh, you want to see what other uh, kind of pin action is happening in the SMHs today. Uh, as we said, a lot of these times, um, if the markets aren't fairly choppy and you get one nice big run, uh, you start kind of a pullback. So I think that's today. Maybe you get a little bounce later this week and then probably a real huge down shot uh, into, uh, into the uh, abyss. But uh, that'll be later this week for the confirmation of that. Uh, but I think we're going to start seeing a lot of these stocks sell off probably over the next three or four days, and then maybe you get a bounce. Uh, got options expiration going into the 19th, uh, and eh, maybe some other stuff out there. Uh, first question out here today is IBM. So we'll look at that one. And two, 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 two. Okay. Yeah, you're just back up to this gap up from earnings. Uh, yeah, in this market, I'd probably go ahead and take the cash. I was thinking maybe 135, 135.50 on the bounce. Uh, you know, they've got a, probably a decent future selling to corporations and institutions and and governments. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's probably still another year down the line. Um, so I'm going to keep an eye on it, but, uh, yeah, I don't think anybody's buying it, uh, because they really, this is a company in transition. Um, we need to think of it also as somewhat as red hat, because that's a big part of its revenues these days that masks the risk. Uh, and of course you've got to wait for that big change into quantum computing, which they say is going to be next year. Um, okay. Uh, back to the usual suspects with AMD. Um, you get a little bit of pin action on this one. A little less so, I suspect, than NVIDIA. Uh, the SMHs. Yeah. You don't have a whole lot of volume yet, but uh, what, we're at about 2.30, so it'd be very interesting to see. Uh, on the SMHs, what you really want to see is that three-by-three three line break, and that generally is where you start seeing lots of action. 
A uh, question about Microsoft MSFT. Uh, they're finally starting to release some of their new fall products. Not a bad day out here. Again, probably the class act of uh, CEOs in technology. They've been able to stay out for the most part of a lot of the issues uh, that uh, don't make them any money. And again, no real break of the 3 by 3 so not an issue there. Uh, question on uh, Micron, which I think we talked about on Friday, which we'll get to after this short time out. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And trying to get some work done here during the break, so we're getting back to it. Give me just a second. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Um, okay. To do. Uh, I will. Oh. I will send that response back to our faithful emailer. And we will be done. Uh, okay. Make sure and give me a call today, 877-927-6648. I'd love to hear your dulcet tones. And uh, I've got another update coming out right now for those at the uh, in the Tech Insider. Uh, okay. What else do we have? 
Uh, okay. Question about the IBB. Oh, we yeah, we looked at Micron, which I think we were going to talk about. Under the 3x3, three three, so, yeah, uh, problematic. Um, this level's about that. It's very tough. Again, this company makes more money on the VRAM uh, that they put on AMD and NVIDIA uh, video cards. So any kind of pullback or weakness there is problematic for Micron. Not a lot of volume so far. Probably the best thing. A lot of people probably looking forward to their next edition of memory that makes lots more money for them. But uh, probably going to be weak for maybe another quarter if we can look at it. Uh, in the energy sector, CCJ. Um, energy is okay. Volume is not, which is problematic today. 2660 uh, didn't really break out much of anything. I'm not going to make a whole lot. Um, I think that this could come back to 2350 uh, and test this gap higher, which is the the next good place to get back into this, but I haven't seen much in that. Uh, question about uh, GLD. Make sure those emails keep coming. Path at TFNN.com. Um, you know, the only problem here is just the incredibly light volume today. 2.4 million shares compared to 5.5 million shares. So is it horribly bearish? No. A day up is okay. Um, I'd still like some kind of pullback uh, to the uptrend line by the 3x3 three three on light volume to catch it. We never got – I was hoping we'd get that last week and get it out of the way, but uh, we still probably have some kind of at least small pullback in gold. But, uh, yeah, probably no real um, inflation uh, uh, relief for the eh, probably conceivable six, 12 months, I suspect we're going to be running hot, as they like to say, and not straight and not normal. If you're firing a torpedo, hot, straight, and normal, no, nah, nah, just hot, no straight, no normal. Oh, we got a call. Rich in Oregon, go ahead. Thanks, Dave, for taking my call. Most now welcome. That the, uh, Congress has passed this fabulous bill, and everything's going to be green. Uh, there's a company I was looking at called Enovix out of Fremont, California. Yeah, trading, almost all of them opened trading. up uh, higher this morning and instantly sold off, which is probably yeah. a pretty good indication that <laughs> not a lot is going to happen. Everybody started digging through what they actually passed. As you know, you can only tell after it's passed what was in it. So, uh, yeah, you got a pretty big deal in it. Like I said, the problem is that I don't know if anybody's going to really be able to hit the under $50,000 price tag to get these benefits. So I think a lot of people are just looking at it as... Uh, in the uh, that were short the General Motors and Ford, I think it's more of a short squeeze. I think everybody else was buying these others uh, up into the passage of this bill, and now it's going to sell uh, sell off on the news. So I don't know if there's a whole lot there. You are uh, and did get into a previous high with 3.6 million with 1.8 so far. So you're going to have lighter volume off the top and kind of a bearish engulfing, depending on how bad it gets today over the last few days. Is it horrible? The end of the world? No. But uh, I'd probably wait until it gets back down to the 3x3 three three and see how it acts uh, as support on the way back up. Uh, somebody says the earnings is tomorrow anyway. Yes. I just didn't so, know if you thought of their lithium cell uh, as being something new and superior to what, say, like a test <laughs> is currently using. All I hear is about all these new and superior uh, cells, and none of them are any different. Okay. Uh, they haven't gotten any better, and they've gotten about 6 to 7% better in the last 12 years. So, you know, I don't know, you know, 
Musk is really good at making a uh, D cell, right? And he had a C cell. So suddenly he says the battery's so much better. Well, it's just bigger, right? He slowly made the chemistry a little bit better and some of the anodes a little bit better and some of the management uh, of the cells is a little better. But I haven't seen anybody that's actually delivered anything yet or has anything that they, that they aren't talking about um, uh, actually shipping. In fact, part of the bill today uh, that they were talking about was this mine uh, that they thought that maybe would be making more lithium in 2027. And then they said, uh, everybody says that's highly optimistic. It's probably 2030. So a lot of this stuff is just probably not going to matter. And I think a lot of people are looking at that and going, yeah, there's not going to be enough lithium for this whole uh, idea of uh, everybody driving EVs. That's going to be a choke point for years to come. And like I said, uh, some of these mines, like the one in North Carolina, they've been holding up already for 10 years. So, you know, if they really wanted it, probably would have happened by now. So my guess is it's a lot of lip action. Okay. Smoke and mirrors. Yeah, but uh, who's surprised by that? I'm shocked. Shocked. The smoke and mirrors yeah. in Washington, D.C. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. No, there's, when you look in there, is you want to go, where's the beef? And you want to go, I want to find something to hate or I want to find something to love. And there just really isn't much in anything in that. And when you actually tear it all up, there just didn't much in all of it, other than some spending and pushing money around. I'm not exactly sure what the details are on the cash, but it the uh, from what I read this morning, it is very tailored to pushing it toward uh, General Motors and Ford. So maybe there's uh, some language in there that we haven't been able to get yet out and published. But that's kind of what everybody's saying. Now, that may be the people trying to run the shorts in Ford and General Motors today, right? So, because that's probably an easy one to think about, right? Everybody said yeah. interest rates are going up. So, anyway, a little pop out there in Ford, Ford today. Anything else? No. no. Thank you, okay. Dave. Thanks for the call, Rich. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro Dollar, Pound Dollar, Aussie Dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Question from uh, M, who wants to uh, remain anonymous but lives at 1313 Mockingbird Lane, uh, wants to take a look at Fortinet. Um, now, this is a big wireless uh, Wi Fi style security company, uh, kind of specializes in wireless technology. Uh, and cybersecurity in that wireless environment. The big problem with uh, a market in pullback or a, a market that is even thinking about a recession is that uh, the CEOs cut money to these first. Uh, I've never understood the whole idea of, of that, but it just seems like uh, whether or not you're a fast stop at the corner, unless the insurance company made you put in video cameras and VCRs back in the 90s, you weren't going to buy one. Um, and eventually, insurance companies forced people to do it. There's eventually going to be some laws that really hold accountable uh, folks that don't at least make a good faith effort on installing security software and maintaining it. But that time hadn't come yet. And Fortinet, really with its specialization in that part of security, uh, is probably the weakest of the bunch. Uh, that being said, uh, as low as it is, I think you want it to go retest uh, the uh, 4873 on lighter volume. It's not horrible, other than it fell out of the, out of the sky. But, uh, you know, it's probably going to go test 4873. And my guess is go sideways. So I don't see a lot happening on that side of it. Uh, yep. A lot of people. Uh. <laughs> uh, uh, Hector emails me something I cannot say on the air. Because some people might not like it. But I will wait, tell Hector that who was in the car with him. Have you heard that? A lot of conspiracy theories out there. Okay. Uh, let's see what I hear. Here we go. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. Got a couple more emails. Let me pick these up here as we move along. Okay. We looked at Apple already. Uh, probably the biggest thing with Apple is that you always have to look at them uh, on their product cycles, getting a big push uh, from the stock market itself. I really dislike uh, the amount of energy uh, off this uh, low compared to the uh, energy on the way down. So you are coming back up on lighter energy. Uh, is the volume all that bad? Well, you had a good day on the 3rd. Now you're kind of going through up with that with a little more than half the volume so far today. So there isn't much there. Could you still get up to 172 on Apple? Yeah. Uh, I'm just thinking that they. I know they have some dog and ponies mid-September. 
maybe late September, and those haven't been announced. But uh, the street and CNBC, uh, they all have a giant uh, love fest and come together and sing Kumbaya with the uh, uh, semi-pliable or totally pliable uh, CNBC press to push whatever they've got. And it's awful hard to think about being short into that. But uh, before that, uh, it may have continuing uh, problems. My big thing is I'm waiting for the other foot to drop. Man, is that a great metaphor? Mixed metaphor, by the way, of uh, with uh, China. So that's it. Okay, 877-927-6648. And yes, I just saw it come across. If you're a subscriber to uh, the Tech Insider, there's a new email out. If you're looking for something like that. Oh, okay. Let's go back to the rest of the market. Okay. Looked at that video, looked at that one, looked at that one. Okay, question about the TLT. Um, this is something I brought up in the newsletter in the morning. And that is just how many of these companies, including Apple and others, are going after bond market money like the end of the world's coming. So are, do they know something else that we don't know? But uh, certainly the bond market's in full tilt trying to push this paper out. I'm just wondering why there's such a desire for these companies like Apple and others that have, you know, more money than probably the countries that aren't in the top five, probably have more cash on hand than any of those. What's going on for the push to get all this cash uh, from bonds and bond offerings and uh, warrants and everything else? But there is a giant push right now on in that sector. And it's kind of holding uh, the TLT and some of these others up right now but my guess when that's over uh that uh and the uh, best prices are done uh that these things are probably going to sink back you got to bounce today on about half the volume of friday my guess as soon as some of these deals are done we're probably heading back to 112. uh <laughs> with or without a shoe <laughs> Well, it's kind of like uh, that uh, story of the fiddler on the roof where the guy says, uh, on one hand, this guy's right, and on the other hand, this guy's right, and yet this guy on the third hand is right. And they can't all be right. Well, that's right. So you never know. Zero Mistel. What a great, uh, what a great actor for that part. Okay, on the positive side, because I've been accused of being a little negative out here, uh, we actually have some decent action in Workday. Uh, this may not be a whole lot left, um, but uh, a good day and uh, okay volume on a day with a big reversal. You've only given about maybe a little three-eighths of it back so far. Uh, the problem is you are back into this gap down. Um, Gap Down didn't have a lot of volume. It had three and a half million shares. You got 2.2 right now, so you're really hitting some resistance. I think a lot of these stocks, at best, are going to have to consolidate, and at worst, could go back and retest some untested lows. In this case, 134.10 out there. Uh, okay. Let's see what we have here. Okay. Off 12 points on the S&P cash now. Crude's gotten back above 90. It had a hard fight out here a little bit earlier, trading at uh, 90.70. 8 You've got, uh, if you're real, real quick, you can get into the last two minutes. If not, email me at path at tfnn.com.
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we kind of continue to slide my suspicion uh, is that we're going to find a lot more in the core CPI. That's going to be half a worm. That's worse than biting into an apple and getting and seeing a worm, uh, actually seeing only half a worm. And I think we get that uh, Wednesday morning, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm kind of bearish for this week. And, of course, uh, 19th is uh, options expiration. We're kind of on the real high right-hand shoulder of expectations. So not really surprised that we're getting a bit of a pullback here. And of course, Wednesday uh, also is Delta neutral day. So we could see some uh, exaggerated moves off a bad CPI uh, that maybe are helped out a little bit by those uh, market makers uh, to help people get in and out of positions. So just be careful that everything, as I said, uh, if you, uh, had my newsletter this morning. There were a lot of storm uh, warnings out here. Uh, category five, if you're not from Florida, uh, that means the worst. <laughs> but uh, we had uh, a couple of the best indicators I have in the newsletter uh, kind of sounding the alarm bell. So I'm not real surprised that we are, already have a fairly good move out here. But in the next few days, I think we're probably going to take a little bit of those rose-colored glasses off 
and we're going to see a little bit more price discovery across through this week. Now, uh, it may extend, uh, but uh, at this point, I'm really waiting to get through Wednesday and see how that works along with uh, crude numbers. I think uh, the way they're received are going to tell me a lot about whether I'm right or wrong on my kind of mid mid uh, fall out there, not a short term, not in the next five or ten minutes, not in the next uh, three or four months, but really in the next few weeks. So we'll see this week. So when you can, not when you have to. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.